In the last video, I installed new gear shift options in the car, then went out to test how powerful they are. But what I didn't know was that the whole time there was a stowaway on board hiding way up under the dashboard. Puss, puss. Ah, you've come to say hello at last. I eventually encouraged the cat out of the car. However, after being trapped in there for many hours, it had, as they say, dumped some apple juice on the carpet. This left me with a fairly stinky problem, so I got busy dismantling half the car in order to get the carpet out. With the carpet removed, I used a technique I discovered from washing the carpet and seats in my original EV conversion, using clothes washing powder with enzymes to eat up the golden goodness that piss and boots had downloaded onto the floor. With the carpet scrubbed and rinsed several times, I hung it up to dry. Meanwhile, I got busy cleaning the floor of the car, vacuuming it, washing it, even applying some oil to help protect against salty, wet shoes in the quickly approaching winter. And with the carpet dry, I put it back in, reassembled the interior, and discovered that I'd created a whole new problem. Well, hello little airbag light. Why aren't you going away? Uh, okay, I've got something to figure out. I guess I must have started the car before I'd connected all of the safety connectors under the seats, which meant I needed to take my now pleasant smelling car to the local Peugeot dealer to get the ABS error codes cleared. This meant taking a more expensive method of transport for one day. Well, it's true what they say. Absence and wet bus stops make the heart grow fonder. Thank God I can pick up my car again. Oh yeah, life has returned to normal. I got my wheels again. The total bill to clear up the error codes came to just under 15 euro, so I'll just chalk that up to a lesson learned when working with airbaggy stuff. In the meantime, with the new gear shift options in the car, I've been monitoring my driving with the Can Iron application to see how much extra range the new B and C modes actually offer. To be honest, I find C mode pretty useless most of the time. You can really only use it in predictable driving situations where there's not a lot of stopping, uh, like highway cruising for example, which these cars aren't designed for anyway, so not very practical. Practical. B mode on the other hand is brilliant. You can use it in a lot of city situations. Most of my driving I do in B mode now because in situations like now where I'm stopped at the lights or where people are pulling out in front of me or people are crossing the road, all those unpredictable situations, B mode is there for you to grab all that electricity back into the battery. It's absolutely brilliant. I reckon you can get about 5 to 10% more range just using B mode. And in a car like mine with the temperatures falling, that's very helpful. The heaters in these little cars aren't too bad heat-wise, but power-wise they're really inefficient little power vacuums. They, uh, they use electricity to heat an element, to heat water, to heat air, to heat me. So inefficient. Uh, and when you're sitting in traffic on a cold day like I am now and I'm running the heater, I've got to sit there constantly worrying about how much range have I got. Another thing people don't often know is that on these cars with a small battery, running the heater can use about 30% of the car's battery pack, and that's a lot. It means that I end up driving with one eye on the road, one eye on the battery meter in winter. So to maximize my car's range and still stay warm, I took advice from YouTube videos, trying some of the crazy ideas I found, starting with wearing a blanket on my daily commute. I'm currently using the blanket method, which means using this big old blanket to keep me warm. Uh, and it works to a point, you know, I've got warm legs, but my hands and my feet are freezing, so it's not perfect. Not only that, everyone's looking at me, especially when I park next to a bus. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. I look a bit like my Nana. Sorry Nana. Yeah, this is driving Miss Daisy in an electric car. So I think we'll scratch this one off the list. That wasn't ideal, so I stepped things up, dressing seriously for winter. Okay, well at least it's warm. It's got that going for it. But everyone's looking at me and I look absolutely ridiculous. Yes, hello. <laughs> okay, those people are staring at me. <laughs> They're laughing. This is not good. This is a terrible idea. While warm, it wasn't very practical, so I tried a more old school method. I don't like this idea! Okay, that one had obvious flaws, but someone also suggested I use the warm smoke from incense sticks to heat up the car. I'll be honest, this one's not a very good idea. At that moment, I stopped using YouTube videos for advice and looked at what other EV owners are doing. One idea that might work while saving my health and my dignity is to use a regular household heater to preheat the car before driving. So, let me connect this, go have a cup of coffee and try it out. Right. Holy cow, crikey, it's like a sweat lodge in here. 
<laughs> All right, that'll get rid of some evil spirits. <laughs> okay, well this idea really sucks. My windows are fogging up because the car's now freezing and I'm starting to get cold. Uh, this is what life is like as a pre-cooked sausage, I guess. Cooking one minute, freezing the next. Another idea I saw to avoid using the car's heater was simple, but actually pretty smart. Just have a hot shower. Well, I've just left home. I'm on my way to the city to work. Let's see how the shower method works at keeping me warm. Well, I'm in the city now. Uh, the shower method was good to start with, but now I'm cooling down again. And I want to turn on the heater, but I can't because I've got some driving around to do this afternoon. So I just have to freeze. Next method, a little more old school this time. I have taken some advice just to have a nice hot cup of coffee while driving. idea is not working, my coffee's cold and it's leaking on me. Ah, for God's sake. Okay, scratch this idea off the list. I'm going to try a different method this morning. What I'm going to do is have a very hot shower, preheat the car with a little heater and fill these up. I've got about 10 litres capacity with really hot water and that should keep the car nice and warm all the way to the city without using any power. I hope. Lovely hot bottles. Let's scatter them around the car. Well, I'm roasting from the shower and the hot water bottles are scattered throughout the car and the car's been preheated and it's fogging up. Uh, I'll be honest, it's not very comfortable in here, but let's see if this heat lasts until the city. Well, I've made my way into the city. To be honest, this method's not actually too bad. It has retained some heat in the car. The only downsides is, one, the windows fog up, and two, I start the first five minutes by sweating my brains out. So uh, I wouldn't say it's the best method, Let's say it's the least worst. Some other idea suggested we're using a 12 volt heater, but I already have one and I know they're as weak as water and they still use electricity. Another idea suggested was placing a hot oil heater in the car and that would stay warm for some time, but it presents another bigger problem. The problem is when I get back to my car at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what method I use, whether it's bottles or blankets, the car is absolutely freezing after a day in the cold, so I need a better system. So I looked online at fuel burning heaters that tap into the car's hot water heating system. They seem like a serious, powerful heating solution, offering wonderful heat without using any noticeable amount of electricity. Other EV owners swear by them, and at least a couple of friends already have them installed in their EVs. The only problem is the cost. Well, with shipping and import taxes, a gas burning water heater would cost me 739 euro. There is just no way I can afford that. It's out of the question. There was, however, one other option that no one seems to have tried before. A diesel-powered air heater. At 457 euro, it's, it's still a lot of money, but it's, it's almost affordable. And people have installed these into vans and motorhomes in the past, but never in an electric car. But I'm almost tempted to buy one just to figure it out and have a go myself. It's a hell of a lot of money, so I did the sensible thing and wrote down a pro and con list. Something else to consider is that I haven't bought any gas or diesel in 16 months. So if I was going to start burning diesel again, even just a tiny amount for heating, I'd have to do this sensible thing and try and find a biodiesel supplier, which might not be so easy. So with my pro and con list swaying heavily on the pro side, I got out my terrified credit card and pressed the big buy now button. My car looks really tired. <laughs> I hope I haven't just made a big mistake, but we'll find out. We're learning together here. Watch this space. You'll find out in the next Kiwi EV episode coming very soon. So stay tuned. <laughs> Takes me back to my teenage years. Well, I didn't say that. I didn't say that.